So today we're going to talk about tips and tricks for single dark tooth bleaching. And I want to remind everybody to follow us on our multiple social media platforms. The, the ones that we use the most is Instagram and Facebook. Uh, we upload weekly tips, two to three tips every week on both of these platforms. So please make sure that you follow us and that you share our platforms with other colleagues that you may know so that we can all benefit from our, uh, you know, our webinars. I want to also thank the companies that make this possible, Colteen, Oral Arts Dental Laboratories, Garrison Dental Solutions, and Cavo Kerr. And I want to remind everybody that you will be able to obtain a one free CE credit that will be provided by us after the completion of the quiz. And I'll show you exactly what you need to do to be able to download the quiz and complete it. The first thing you need to do is you need to visit our webpage www.romerodentalseminars.com Once you are in our webpage, I want you to click on the link that says webinars and you will see a drop down menu with three links. Link number one is our live webinars link. There you will find future webinars and you can sign up for those webinars ahead of time. Link number two is our on demand link. And there you will find all the recorded versions of our webinars, of our previous webinars, that you can watch them in the comfort of your own home at any time, day and night, if you want to review anything. And finally, you will find our CE quizzes link, where you will be able to download the CE quiz that corresponds to the webinar. So today you will find a CE quiz called Dark Tooth uh, Quiz. You will download that quiz after my presentation, and then you will complete it. You will fill the, 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 uh, the bottom information, personal information that is needed. And then you're going to email it to Romero Dental Seminars at gmail.com. And we will process your uh, uh, CE credits after we receive uh, the quiz, the completed quiz. I also want to share with you our YouTube channel. Romero Dental Seminars, where we upload and we keep all our webinars in one site. So if you want to go directly to our YouTube channel, you want to visit our YouTube channel, you want to share our YouTube channel with other colleagues, all our webinars are there for free for anybody to watch any day of the week and at any time of the day. And now I want to go ahead and share with you the objectives that I have for today's presentation. My first objective is for to help you understand the different etiologic factors that actually, uh, um, uh, um, you know, are the causing factor for dark tooth or dark teeth. How to effectively fabricate a single dark tooth bleaching tray. Understand how to simplify product selection and help you effectively manage single dark tooth cases in your own practice. As you all know, my presentations are very clinical, so I'm going to try to make everything you know, um, a very nice and clear and very simple on a, from the clinical perspective. So my first tip and trick today is the etiologic factor, the etiology of dark teeth. And for that, I want to share with you just two to three cases so that I can exemplify, you know, the reasoning behind this and why it is so important. So first I want to share with you my first patient today in the morning. And as you can see, she has a very nice smile. She has never had a feeling in her mouth, very healthy patient, young, healthy patient. But when I was doing my uh, clinical examination and I took this photo, we can all appreciate or notice that tooth number nine is slightly darker than every other tooth, right? To, 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 you know, slightly darker compared to tooth number eight and compared to tooth number 10. So we can visualize that this tooth is having something is happening here. And that's the most important thing. And sometimes these, these color changes are very, are very subtle. And that's why we have to keep our eyes open. For this particular patient, I had known her for a couple of years. She was not my patient, but I had known her for a couple of years. I have never noticed that she had a darker tooth. She hadn't noticed that she had a darker tooth. We actually noticed this after we took this photograph where I was looking directly into the number nine and I was like, well, this tooth is a little bit darker than the rest and I want to know why. You know, it could be that there's nothing wrong and it's just, you know, it's just a matter of that the tooth is darker, the dentin is more saturated, whatever. But it could be, there could be an underlying cause that can be, uh, 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 you know, promoting or, or helping this tooth to be darker. So we want to make sure that we investigate a little bit further. 
And, you know, when we retract now the lips and cheeks and we take this photo with a black contraster, you can now see that the changes in color are more noticeable or they're more intense on the cervical aspect of the tooth. So obviously, if you have a low smile line and that's the area where the tooth is darker, it's going to be kind of hard for the patient to tell and even for the dentist. In this particular case, the patient had, a, I would say, a medium smile line. So, you know, she was displaying, I would, you know, a little bit of the gingival zenith of the teeth. So it, it, you could tell that the tooth was a little bit darker, fairly easy. And that's how we discovered it. But it, was, it wasn't until we had the photo. You know, when I was having conversations with her prior to me having her in a dental chair, I would I had never noticed that this tooth was a little bit darker and nor she nor the, she hadn't noticed it either. So it wasn't only me, it was her as well. And her previous dentist did not notice it either. So it was, you know, it was it was subtle, but at the same time when we took the photo, it was um dark enough for me to say there's something here. I want to go ahead and investigate and see if there's any underlying cause. And, you know, when we look at the CBCT, uh, you can, we can all appreciate, you know, very typical internal resorption, that balloon shaped uh, canal that you can see here on the right hand side, on the left hand side of the screen, uh, where my CBCT is located. So now we know that there is really a, a big problem on this tooth, because if you think about this, look how thin the buccal wall of, uh, of the bone is, you know, bu buckled or facial to the root, to the, to the root surface, uh, and we were no. There's only there was there were only two millimeters of actual dentin left between the resorptive area within the pulp chamber and that buccal wall. So if we had waited longer, if you know, if we hadn't had the patient seated on our chair, if this would you know, if 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 time would have gone by without anybody seeing noticing this, this tooth would have ended up with an extraction. And the reason why I think that this is so important, and it's so important that we you know look into these cases and we try to identify these these minimal or subtle changes, is because if this young patient. And you can see how beautiful the tissue is. She has never had any fillings, no restorations. So if you think about it, I, then having to extract that tooth, trying to maintain that gingival zenith, that gingival architecture around this area, trying to maintain the mesial and distal papilla, placing an implant, restoring that single tooth, that single implant with a single restoration. These are all very challenging things for us to do. And we know that. So, you know, the more, uh, and, and, and again, this was, you know, I, this was just luck. We were lucky. She was lucky enough to sit on my chair. I was lucky enough to kind of see, okay, this tooth is a little bit darker. Let's get a CBCT. Let's get a PA. Let's see what's going on here. So it was a little bit of luck more than somebody really noticing something was happening. So this is important because again, sometimes there's just, it's just a need for a subtle change. And if we don't capture these changes, accurately and that's where dental photography for me is crucial you know we may miss these things and if we miss them you know the consequences can be can be very uh, 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 difficult to handle and to manage for us and for the patient so keep that in mind now there are other cases that you're going to see well hey you know this is a lot more noticeable i mean there's something really happening here and what's going on and, you know, this is, and obviously there's an obvious reason why the patient was coming and, and wanted us to see her. And, and again, just by looking at the photos, you know that there's something here that is not right. And when you go in, this is another causing factor, which is external apical resorption is what you're seeing here. So now these teeth are necrotic. Uh, you know, there's, there's dead pulp tissue within the tooth. Uh, that has caused the tooth to change in color. Uh, but, you know, the, these teeth were, uh, uh, they had only two class three restorations, so they were not really multi, you know, restored uh, um, multiple times or, or they had any large restorations. So for whatever reason this had happened, uh, now we were looking at the consequences. We were looking at these changes in color that now need treatment. And, and again, I'll walk you through the treatment for this per particular patient, but I just want you for now to think about, you know, dark teeth, to think about a either a single dark tooth or maybe a couple of dark teeth in, a, in the patient's anterior or, or, or aesthetic zone and how we should go about, you know, looking at this and determine what is the etiology. Now for these, normally for any of these patients, you would find that they have a history of, of trauma. For the first patient that I shared with you today, she could not remember ever having trauma uh, on tooth number nine. 
uh, we actually had to communicate with the mom and she did remember when she was, you know, around, I would say seven or eight years old. She, there were, there were, there were two being in, 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 in the North of the United States on snow and she fell and she hit her face and she hit her, actually her tooth. So she did recall having an accident. She did not recall being a really bad accident or having a difficult time after the trauma. But it was, uh, uh, it, there was a history of trauma many, many years ago, and now we were looking at the consequences. And when you look at the evidence, you'll see that many of these patients, that is the causing factor. They have an, an, a traumatic event that can lead to something like what you're seeing right now. For this uh, second patient, uh, uh, she did not uh, recall having uh, trauma to these teeth as well. Again, th these are things that, you know, she, she didn't even know that she was having the resorption because the teeth were not mobile. The teeth were actually very, very stable, even though you can see that there's, there's a lot of root surface resorption. There's a lot of root surface loss that, you know, would, would, would make any dentist imagine, oh my gosh, these teeth are super loose. Well, they were not loose at all. Uh, and, 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 and again, I'll show you how we manage this case a, a little bit later. Uh, you know, other reasons for, for you to have dark teeth and you can see this patient here she presented with two dark teeth and you can see here tooth number seven and tooth number nine when you look at the canine to canine uh, or their smile line or the aesthetic zone on the side photo you can see tooth number seven a lot darker than the canine and the central and on uh, over here on tooth number nine you know, slightly darker than tooth number eight and number 10. So again, sometimes they're very subtle changes, but you know, when you retract and you look at the photo and again, I cannot stress enough, you know, the importance of dental photography for these cases, just to make sure that you sit down and you look at them because this was, this was very evident that this tooth was darker, but this one, uh, kind of, you know, kind of subtle. And, 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 you know, both of them have two different etiologies and I'll share with you, uh, the x-rays right now and you can see what was going on. So the patient had had a root canal treatment on tooth number nine, and that was the causing factor for this tooth to be darker. But on tooth number seven, the patient had, um, uh, pulp canal, uh, uh, pulp chamber obliteration. And I can say, you know, the canal is very, very thin, but you can see that there is no pulp chamber remaining there. Everything has been filled by, um, by, uh, dentin, uh, uh, and, 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 and the thing here for this particular patient, again, she did not remember, she couldn't recall if she ever had trauma. She did remember that this tooth ended up having a root canal because the tooth started getting darker and was having some type of, uh, of, 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 uh, uh, resorb, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, uh, uh calcification or, uh, uh, um, was going through calcification just like number seven. So many, many years ago, the endodontist decided to do a root canal, even though that tooth was, did not have a periapical lesion was not necrotic. Uh, you know, and, and this is very important for you to understand because when I see these patients today, many of you may think, Hey, well, maybe this tooth needs a root canal at this point. And I can tell you right now that Pope canal obliteration, very few of these teeth end up with periapical lesions. Uh, or end up needing or requiring a root canal. So root canals are not mandatory for these cases. Root canals are only performed if there is a necrotic tissue, if there's a periapical lesion that requires for you to go in and treat these teeth by means of a root canal. So if the tooth has pulp canal obliteration and there is no periapical lesion, the only thing that that tooth really requires or needs is let's go ahead and make it lighter if the tooth is darker. And obviously you're always going to find these teeth to be darker because they have more dentin within. So the, the dentin is going to saturate the tooth a lot more because of the concentration of, the, or the amount of dentin within the pulp chamber. But again, it's important for us to understand that teeth that do undergo root canal treatment, they will change. They may have color changes as well. And the thing is that many of us may think that every single tooth that has a root canal that becomes darker will require a uh, internal bleaching treatment modality. And I'll show you today that that is not the case. And this is my final etiology, uh, um, uh, uh, patient for just to review the etiologic factors of, of dark teeth. And in this particular case, he has a single dark tooth and you can see that it's tooth number nine and it's very, very noticeable. Everybody can tell that tooth is a lot darker than the rest. And again, if we remember the cases that I previously presented, it would be kind of easy for us to say, well, hey, maybe this patient had a trauma and maybe this patient either has a root canal on that tooth or has a, you know, pulp canal obliteration. And that's the reason why he has a darker tooth. But surprisingly, 
I find this to be, you know, fairly common that even though this tooth is very, very dark compared to every other tooth in the, in the aesthetic zone for this patient, this tooth has no pathological causing factor for the tooth to be darker. You can see it has a normal uh, pulp chamber, a normal uh, root canal. Actually, I would say even kind of on the wide side. But if you look at eight and nine, they're both have, you know, seven, eight, nine, and 10 on this CBCT on the left-hand side. You can see that his, his, his canals and his pulp chambers are very w wide. So this is something normal for this patient. This tooth is just simply darker because it's darker. Patient did not recall having a trauma. Uh, uh, nobody in his family recall having a trauma. Patient did state that the tooth had been darker for years. So it was something that it was very noticeable that he had and he just wanted to see if there was something that could be done for this tooth just to match the rest of the teeth. So again, um, you know, just to give you an idea that there's, multi, you know, there, there's a couple of reasons why a tooth can become darker and we have to understand very well the etiologic factor that caused the tooth to be darker so that the treatment plan that we uh, uh, uh you know put together for our patients it, it solves the problem with the with o always keeping in mind the conservative nature of the treatment because again i know that you have seen this because i have seen it multiple times i know that we have all seen teeth like the ones that i have shared with you today being you know drilled eliminated the removal of the enamel just prepared and then ended up either with a crown, most likely, or a veneer. But even if you were to do a portion veneer, keep in mind that in order for you to change multiple shades, you need to be more aggressive in your preparation. And if you don't end up having enough enamel, maybe the veneer is not gonna be the best solution for that, for that uh, patient. So keep that in mind. My tip and trick number two, and my tip and trick number two is the fabrication of the tray. And last week, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, three or four weeks ago in our last webinar, we spoke about just vital bleaching and we talked about, you know, fabricating uh, our, our trays. If you did not, if you haven't watched our webinar on vital tooth bleaching, please, I would encourage you to go ahead and do so, so that you have an idea of what our philosophy is in regards to fabricating the tray. But just to summarize today, you know, and, and just to differentiate one tray versus the other, the most important thing in your office that you should do is identify the dark tooth. So I normally, sometimes I just grab a little marker, just like you're seeing here, a pink marker, and I just put a dot on the tooth and I tell the dental assistant, hey, go ahead and fabricate the tray for me. Make sure that you make two windows side to side on the tooth that has that pink dot on the marked tooth. They know that the marked tooth is the dark tooth. And the reason why we're doing these two windows is because one of the most common mistakes that clinicians make when they have patients with dark teeth or, or a dark tooth a single dark tooth or two or three dark teeth in the aesthetic zone is that they want to bleach all those teeth in the aesthetic zone at the same time. And this is a huge mistake because you will never get the dark tooth to bleach at the same uh, 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 speed than the, uh, than the natural teeth that have nothing uh, uh, affecting them. So keep that in mind. That's why it's important that you fabricate two trays for these patients. The first tray is what we call the dark tooth bleaching tray. And this tray was published and designed uh, and it's published in the literature by Dr. Van Haywood. So he's got, there's a lot of things that he can, that he has out there uh, based on this topic. And I would highly encourage you to, you know, look for some of his articles in, in, in Google. You can Google them. You will find a lot of information ab about the articles that he has written on all these topics that will probably help you understand this a little bit better. But I'm just giving you the summarized version of that, which is, I, you know, you cut two windows left and right to the single dark tooth or left and right to, you know, two or three dark teeth in the aesthetic zone and make sure that the patient then only bleaches that tooth initially. And, I'll, and again, I'll walk you through the clinical steps. And this is another case. This is a case where the patient had, you can see that she had two dark teeth. So seven and, and nine were dark. The, so we needed to cut three windows. And this is another way of doing this. Just grab a pencil and just mark an X and tell your assistant, go ahead and fabricate the tray and then just cut the windows where the X's are. So if you need, you know, more than two windows, maybe this is a better way of doing it. But the windows, the reason why the windows are there is so that the patient can apply the bleaching gel only on the affected tooth or teeth, in this particular case, two teeth, 
and then if there's any excess flowing through the you know uh, out of the tray and onto the neighboring teeth they they have they're able to clean the excess remove the bleaching gel from those teeth in order for just to concentrate on the bleaching efforts in relation to the teeth that are darker that is very very important and that is why this tray is designed another feature that the tray has and and, and i've shared this before as you can see that because and i'll talk a little bit about when we when we use uh, when we select our products but because we select we correctly select the concentrator concentration of the product that we're going to use we don't need to scallop these trays now you will need to scallop them and i'll talk about that if you select a different concentration i'll mention that a little bit but i will share with you today every single case that i'm sharing with you today has been performed with just one single uh, a concentration and i'll talk about that a little bit later but again no scalloping needed you can see uh, this is the tray on tooth number seven, uh, covering tooth number nine. You can see the window on tooth number eight and the window on tooth number 10. So this allows the patient to clean any excess that it, it, you know, that she may have once she sits the tray in her mouth. And only the other thing that helps is that it helps the patient know exactly where to apply the bleaching product. And that's, again, it's, it's very, very important. Now I said at the beginning that these patients need two trays. And they need two trays because the first tray that you're going to use is the single dark tooth bleaching tray. For this particular patient, this patient had a single dark tooth. It was tooth number seven. So you can see that the tray that we fabricated for him initially had two windows. One window on tooth number six, one window on tooth number eight. You can see no scalloping of the tray, no reservoirs either. So this is just a suck down directly onto the model. And all this has to do with the product and the concentration that we select. On the right hand side, you can see now a normal bleaching tray and no windows on them. And the reason why we give them the second tray is that once we get to the dark tooth to be lighter, to kind of match the neighboring teeth, then we tell our patient, go ahead and start using this other tray and start applying bleaching products on every tooth in the, in the aesthetic zone. So now we're going to now increase the value on every tooth, including the tooth that was darker initially, but that at the point that you are giving the patient the new tray, it must match or very closely match the neighboring teeth. That's very, very important. Do not go from the dark tooth to full, full bleaching uh, if the dark tooth has not matched the neighboring teeth. And again, no scalloping and one to two millimeters from the gingival margin to the edge of the tray. So now we're going to talk about tip and trick number three, and this is about product selection. And again, there's not a lot that I'm going to say about this because if, again, if you watch my webinar on vital bleaching, you know what my, what my philosophy is in regards to using bleaching agents and how do I go about, you know, bleaching my patients, either vital or non-vital teeth. But my number one option is always going to be 10% carbon peroxide. And 10% carbon peroxide is my number one option for multiple reasons. The first one being is very, very safe. It doesn't cause or very minimal opportunities for it to cause gingival irritation. Very rarely it causes tooth sensitivity. So all these features that I just mentioned are very important for the patient. Because if you want the patient to be able to wear this tray and to be able to apply the product and go through the process of bleaching their teeth, they don't want to have sensitivity. They don't want to have air or cold or hot bothering their teeth. They don't want to have gingival irritation. Don't forget, gingival irritation can cause bleeding, can cause necrosis of the tissue, can cause recession. And, you know, it's going to be sensitive for the patient. We don't want our patients to go through that. And that's the beauty of 10% carbon peroxide. It's such a safe and great product. And it does the job. Basically and fundamentally, it does the job. And I'll show you again. Every case that I'm going to share with you today has been done with 10% carbon peroxide. Now, you may be asking yourself, hey, Dr. Romero, do you use any other concentration? And I'm, and I'm going to say, yes, I do have 15 and 20%. Do I use them very often? My answer is no. I use them very rarely. And when is it that I may be able to use them? Well, sometimes I have patients that have a single dark tooth or have a couple of dark teeth. And you know what? The, 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 the tooth is very... Um, 
It, it, it doesn't it resolve easily. You give them 10% carbon peroxide, they've been using it for 15 days, and they come back and you take a new photo and you just see very, very little changes. You don't see a lot of changes. And that, you know, if, if two or three weeks after giving them 10%, I don't see a lot of changes, well, hey, maybe this is the time to use a higher concentration. But keep in mind that if you use a higher concentration, you may, the patient may have some gingival irritation. You're gonna have to modify the bleaching gel, the ble I'm sorry, the bleaching tray. You're gonna have to scalp of that bleaching tray so that you don't have any any of the tray covering the tissue and maybe you know irritating or causing any type of effect on the gingival on the gingival tissues so uh, i'm not saying that i never use them i am saying that 95 percent of the times my cases are solved with 10 percent carbon peroxide so that's the reason why for today i'm giving you this as the only option as a, a, a product selection and finally we get to our tip and trick number four where we're gonna talk about the clinical management. You know, how do we go about it? And I'm gonna show you two or three cases just to exemplify, you know, what we're talking about today in the morning. And again, keep in mind that every single one of these cases have been solved using the, exactly the same product, 10% cap on my peroxide. And I start again with my, with my first patient. And you can see again, the case that I was mentioning you at the beginning, you know, it was not evident as evident for me i knew this patient for a couple of years before she ever sat on my dental chair and i took this photo and right after the photo first thing that came up to my eyes was this tooth appears to be a little bit darker and again now you know why the tooth was darker it had internal resorption and because of the internal resorption you know we know now that you know it did not perforate the entire buccal wall of the root so we went ahead sent this patient to the endodontist they did a root canal they sealed all that area we were able to save this tooth and then after that if you think about it you know what are the chances of you of you know of, of treating a tooth with internal resorption or, or any type of resorption but most importantly the internal resorption and then going in and doing i don't know using a high concentration uh, 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 uh bleaching product you know in the pulp chamber or you know inside the tooth so um an internal bleaching with, I don't know, hydrogen peroxide. I mean, these things are very aggressive and we know that these things can cause in the future, they can cause resorption of the uh, of the root. So, you know, external or internal resorption. So we gotta be very, very careful. If we already knew for this particular patient that we had a resorptive lesion in within the tooth, I was not gonna go and, and bleach this tooth internally using hydrogen peroxide. I was gonna go and do the most simple, cost-effective and safe treatment modality that is out there, which is 10% carbon peroxide with a single dark tooth bleaching tray and send the patient home with that tray and the bleaching product. And what you're gonna see is that 15 days later of using 10% carbon peroxide, now tooth number eight and nine were a very close match. And now we are able to give this patient a full set of, you know, a new tray with every tooth covered within that trade and now give her a new syringe and continue using 10% carbon peroxide for, I don't know, 15 more days. And you can see where we were able to take this patient. You know, this is how she started. This is B1 and you can see the beautiful value that we were able to achieve on every tooth in her smile line or in the aesthetic zone. But most importantly, look at the match between eight and nine. And the reason why we were able to achieve that match was because we used the right treatment modality. We fabricated a special tray, we gave the patient the product, we told her only to bleach the dark tooth, and then we went about bleaching the rest of the teeth, including the dark tooth, so that we can make them all nice and bright. And this is, I think this was maybe 30 to 60 days after treatment. This is before treatment. And I think that I have a, here you go, the one year follow-up photo for this patient. You can see eight and nine are still a really good match. Beautiful color of the teeth. If she ever, you know, if, if she ever wants to go back and if she ever needs to retouch the bleaching, she can use exactly the same treatment modality. And again, cost-effective, safe. It doesn't create any gingival irritation, very little to no to sensitivity when you're doing this treatment. And here's my case number two. Case number two, this is two dark teeth, seven and 10. Seven, you, we already know that it had a pulp canal obliteration. 10 had a root canal treatment. So of course, the two, they were, they were not, you know, they were, the one was darker than the other, seven was darker than 10. And again, when you have pulp canal obliteration, look at number seven. Look at the gingival aspect. I always want you to look at that area because that's the area that takes the longest to bleach. And again, that this is important for you to know. 
the bleaching gel does not need to touch that area. The patient can place a bleaching gel on the facial aspect and it can just cover whatever it wants to cover. Because you don't have any reservoirs, there's very intimate contact between the gel and the tray. So the gel will spread nicely around the tooth. And that is why you're gonna get very, with a very low concentration, but you're gonna get diffusion of the oxygen molecules within, you know, through the enamel within the dentin and getting all those color stains out of that tooth. And then again, little by little, you cut the tray, you do the windows, and I showed you this tray before. You fit in the tray for the patient. You can see how the teeth that are darker are now covered. The ones that are right next to them, they're not covered so that she can clean the excess. Look at the one week post-op. Look at the change on tooth number seven. Yes, the tooth is still darker, but we're almost there. And look at the change on tooth number nine. I mean, nine actually appears to be a little bit lighter than number eight. So it is important for you to see that, you know, the changes happen rapidly. They happen quick and fast, even though we're using a very low concentration product. This is week number two. Again, slow progression, but safe and very, very effective. Week number three. Wow. Now you see the light again, seven and, 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 and nine. Now we're going to go ahead and we gave her week number two. We gave her the full bleaching tray. Now this is full bleaching tray. And then week number four. So, you know, they don't, they're, they're going to take longer, two weeks for the dark teeth, two weeks for everything else. But look at the result. Look at the smile. You cannot tell at this point that tooth number seven has pulp canal obliteration and tooth number nine has a root canal treatment. Why? Because we were able, using a very single product, a very simple product, a very simple technique and a safe protocol, we were able to achieve, you know, to give this patient what she was looking for. Let me show you case number three. In case number three, you can see, look at the dark tooth number seven. Yeah, the canine was, the canine number six was a little bit dark as well, but normally the canines are darker and the canines had no problems. This tooth had pulp canal obliteration. And if you have pulp canal obliteration, you know that you have excessive dentin in that, in, in that pulp chamber, the tooth is going to appear to be darker. So what are we going to do here? We're going to use 10% carbamide peroxide. We're going to use a non scallop dark tooth, single dark tooth bleaching tray for that specific lateral incisor. And there is, you can see pulp canal obliteration, no periapical lesion. You can see very dark lateral incisor. And there's my single dark tooth bleaching tray. You can see window on the left, window on the right, and the middle tooth covered. Patient is given this tray. Patient was given the same day, was given the full tray but instructed only to use the single dark tooth bleaching tray for the first two weeks. Now I want you to, I want to tell you that I follow up these cases. I just don't give them the bleaching tray and the bleaching product and say, Hey, go home and bleach and I'll see you or, you know, in 30 days from now. No, I follow up these cases because I want to make sure that the transition from the, from the single dark tooth bleaching tray to the regular tray happens when it needs to happen. I want to make sure that that lateral incisor for this particular case is light enough for him to go and transition to the other tray because I've made the mistake. I have made the mistake where I have, you know, I know that they're not identical and I give them the new tray and now suddenly everything becomes light really quick and that tooth still remains dark or darker. So that's the reason why I want to be involved. I want the patient to understand that this is a dental driven the uh, uh, procedure and again there is the 1.2 millimeters from the gingival margin straight no scalloping look at one week later one week later now we have this tooth look very close to the to number 10 you know it was a lot lighter so we go ahead and we give the patient this is we they had two weeks of single dark tooth so we kept up one more week and then we gave them one week of the full tray and look at every other tooth, the way that it would, they were able to become very nice and light. And I'll show you the final smile for this patient. And again, yeah, you know, you can see that there's a little bit, very subtle yellowish aspect on the gingival portion of that tooth. Well, Hey, sometimes, you know, you, you, you can, sometimes you won't eliminate 100% that yellow area on the very cervical aspect of the tooth, but the patient was very happy. He was happier with what he had today than what the way that we started this case. Can I do something more for that tooth? You know, can we give him more bleaching product and maybe, I don't know, two to three months later, because sometimes it may take a long time for it to disappear completely. And yes, that may happen. But again, I always listen to my patients and I always listen and, 
and want to know what they feel and what they want. He was extremely happy with that result. And if he was happy, we were happy. And then finally, I'm going to share you the most comp the most difficult or complex case that I presented to you today where we had these two teeth. You can see they only had two class threes, uh, I mean, two on the measle and one class three on the distal. You know, no other composites on the teeth. The teeth had that uh, uh, apical external resorption, in, apical inflammatory resorption. As you can see, they were necrotic at this point. The teeth were solid as a rock. They were not mobile. Uh, you know, we knew that it was going to be, we were not promising this patient that these teeth are going to be in her mouth forever. But at this point, we were confident enough that, you know, they were nice and stable. They had been there, God knows for how long. And, and we were just able to, you know, refer her to the endodontist. The endodontist said, yeah, we can go ahead and, you know, treat these teeth. They sealed them with MTA on the apical portion. And you can see how much of the, how much improvement was gained throughout the years. This is 2014. This is 2017. This case is still uh, working the same way today. So now we're talking about seven years post-op for this particular patient. But I want to show you that we did go a different route for this patient. We had the endodontist complete the root canals. Once she completed the root canal, she went ahead and she sealed both axes of, of eight and nine using a resin modified glass ionomer. And we got the patient back once the tooth were completely sealed with resin modified glass ionomer by the endodontist. At that point, we left these uh these uh access open and this is what we call the inside out bleaching uh, uh um, technique which means that you're going to use 10 percent carbamide peroxide you're going to give the patient a bleaching tray don't forget 10 percent safe product no gingival irritation so if you know if the patient doesn't you know because they, they, they have to apply the bleaching gel within the tooth a little bit on the tray and then sit the tray back in place and we give them a a, 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 a dark teeth bleaching tray we, that means that we cut some windows on the laterals so that she can remove any excess and we you know we just give her the bleaching product and little by little every night she puts in the tray she puts in the bleaching product she sleeps with it and you can see you know Three, four weeks later, these teeth were extremely light. We given her as well a, a bleaching tray, for a full bleaching tray so that she can bleach the tray, but she can bleach the rest of the teeth. The, uh, both class three composites were, were, um, were, um, were changed, so we were we, we redone. And I want, to look, I want you to look at the dates. You know, April of 2016, we started in 2014, June of 2017. This is now today, to, uh, uh, six or seven years after this, uh, case was completed you can see the teeth are not darker like they're not dark as they were before they've been able to keep their color we haven't gone back in and given her any additional products obviously once you complete the bleaching for these patients you go back and you seal that lingual axis with composite resin and this is just one treatment modality it's one treatment option and i wanted to share with you because this is not something that i that we do frequently i tend to treat my patients using the other techniques that I showed you today. Very simple, no access to the lingual. But in this particular case, because these teeth needed root canals, they needed to go in through the, they needed to access through the canals. Well, we took the advantage of that and we said, you know, just go ahead and seal them well, leave them open for us and we'll go ahead and, and bleach them through that access. And obviously it's gonna give us, you know, a little bit of a faster result. And it did work faster for this particular patient. So now I'm, I'm ready to take any questions you may have. So I'm